Hey there everyone, Daniel Lowry from Anti-Siphon Training back with another installment in our Networking Fundamental Series. And today we are going to be talking about DHCP. That's right, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Doesn't it sound awesome? Actually, it kind of is. It's kind of fire, not going to lie. Uh, because it does so much for us and we utilize it so much every day. And it keeps us from having to do a lot of manual work. And so it's kind of Ron Popeil style. We set it up and we forget it and we love it because it's amazing. But let's start there. Let's start talking about what does DHCP do? DHCP handles the configuration of the network things that a host needs to play nice on a network, to be a part of a network. It does all that stuff for us. It is a network service, right? By the way, port numbers, got to love our port numbers, right? This is going to be a UDP port on the client side of 68 and on the server side of 67. So using the UDP land, very, very cool. It's good, just general knowledge to be aware of, right? But then we have DHCP doing the thing, right? It says, okay, here, here's basically a package that if you accept, you can apply to yourself and be a part of this network. And that is speaking to your device, that is. And these devices can range from things like laptops, like I've got in front of me, to desktops, to servers, to IoT devices. If it needs a network configuration, if it has networking capabilities and you want it to be on that network, you're gonna have to configure the thing. Most times though, we lean very heavily on DHCP to do that. And of course, it's all in the name, right? The name, Dynamic Host Control Fig Configuration Protocol. Dynamic meaning there's things that could be changing, and we'll, we'll see what that is here in just a moment, but typically it's the IP address that might change because it doesn't matter what IP it is. So there's a dynamic aspect to it. And then there's the host, dynamic host configuration protocol. The host is the device. Configuration going to be all those networking bips and bobs that you need. And then it's a protocol, right? It's got rules and guidelines that it follows to make sure that all this happens in the right way. How can we see this though? Like, how can we work with this? Well, we can start by just checking out our machines. Now I've, I've got uh, Windows 11 up here, right? If I'm here in Windows 11, I can do an IP config slash all. It's gonna show me the information that I have. And you can see right here for this adapter, Ethernet zero, it says right there, DHCP enabled, yes. That lets me know that this, all this configuration, my IP address, my subnet mask, my lease, my default gateway, DHCP server, DNS server, all this information most likely came from a DHCP server. Fun fact, not all of that has to be a part of a DHCP package, right? But typically it is. Sometimes we deviate from that, but I just wanna, let's start with the easy stuff first, right? So typically these are the kind of things that you see within a, a DHCP offer. And let's get into that, right? So let's move into how does DHCP work? For that, I'm actually going to employ Kali Linux because it's a little more helpful in us being able to see this stuff. So I can do the same thing, right? I can do an IP adder or an IP config, if, or I'm sorry, or an IF config if I wanted to. And I can see the, the information around the different adapters. I've got an adapter right here, Ethernet 1. It's got an IP address. It's got all the same kind of, there's a subnet mask. Very similar types of information, right? Same thing with IP adder. There's Ethernet 1. There's the IP address. There's the broadcast address. Like, so much fun. We're having a good time here. We also have some information about the DHCP lease. Very, very cool. But if I use this command, if I sudo, I'll need sudo for this, so I have to elevate my privileges, and I perform a DH client, I do a dash R, this will release all that information. We'll say, you know what? I, I give it back to you, DHCP server. I no longer require it. Thank you. So I'm going to release that. I'm going to say that it's on Ethernet adapter one. So ETH one, that was the name of that Ethernet adapter that we just looked at. I give it my password. If I can, I think I can. Did I do it right? <laughs> there you go. Oh, my password's difficult. 
There we go. And then it says, killed old client process. Bam. Excellent. Now I want to make that offer. And there's a, there is a structure that DHCP uses to make all this stuff happen. The client reaches out to the server. The server responds to the client. The client responds to the server back with an agreement. And then, of course, the server says, okay, that sounds good. Go ahead and make it happen. And then the client applies the configuration. But there's, there's a process to it. We have a nice little mnemonic for it called DORA for discover, offer, R is request, and then acknowledge. So D-O-R-A, DORA. We can see that right here. Let's check it out. So if I perform a sudo dh clients dash v on ethernet one and I hit enter, we can see we go through that process and it verbosely, that's what the dash v is, tells me what that information is. It says, okay, I'm listening on this device and I send a DHCP discover uh, uh, packet on ethernet one, right? Cause that's what we defined right here to this right here, which is the broadcast address. This means send it out to every device on the network. Over port 60, oh, look at that, ports. I love ports, right? Ports are so great. So we see it's going out to every device on this network on port 67, because port 67 is where DHCP servers are serving up DHCP stuff, hot on a plate, right? If you're not a DHCP server, port 67 UDP is most likely not doing anything and therefore will not respond. That's fine. So it doesn't matter whether or not you're a DHCP server or not, but if you are, you're going to go, looks like someone, it's like the bat signal goes out, but it goes out to the, the entire network and your DHCP server goes, I'm a DHCP server. I just got a request on port 67 UDP. Bam. I got that, that discover happened, right? So that's, that's where it starts. DHCP discover. So then it says, well, let me look in my IP range. What do I have available? What's next that is available? And it grabs the next available IP address, which for this was 10.10.129 or 10.10.10.129. And it tells me where it came from, which, so this is my DHCP server right here. It's an IP address of 10.10.10.254. Obviously, we're on a 10.10.10 network. Very cool. So we know that this is the host portion of that network. Bada bing, bada boom. So there goes your offer, right? Now, multiple DHCP servers, it is allowed to have more than one DHCP server on a network. Your client most likely is just going to respond to the first offer it receives. It's going to go, okay, I got one. Cool. So just be aware of that. You know, conflicts could could occur. You might get the wrong DHCP information because it it responded first, and therefore your client went, "Cool, I got it. I like this offer. Sounds good." And when it does that, it moves on to the request side, right? I know this is like all these are requests, but this is the DHCP request. So your client says, "Cool, I like this ten 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 dot one twenty nine business." for ethernet one sounds great. I'm all about this. So it sends it back out, even though it should know where it's from at this point, but it sends it back out to everybody. And then of course the server responds back saying, Hey, I acknowledge that you like what you saw. So basically what's happening in the request is that your client is signing the, the contract. It's signing the lease. And that's something that we didn't get into very, very much. And maybe now's a good time to, to kind of move down that, that road. This is all done in the lease. This isn't a forever thing. Hence the dynamic portion of dynamic host control or uh, host configuration protocol. It could change and will and does. The dynamic portion is that this is a lease. This is an agreement for you get this IP for this amount of time. Once that's done, if you would like another one, then of course, you know what to do. You'll have to reach out to me. We'll make a new agreement. I will send it your way. You will sign the contract. I will receive the signed contract. I will sign the contract. I'll stick that information that, hey, this IP is being used by this device in a database and you're golden. Go ahead and apply. Just like you do with a car, just like you do when you lease a house or an apartment, right? You drop a contract between two parties that says, we are going to utilize this resource. In this case, it's an IP address. 
and I'm going to have it for this amount of time. Once that time expires, we need to renegotiate. That is what leases do. Let's jump back in and take a look at that lease information. Because I think, let's, um, let's jump over to the Windows machine because we saw that here, right? Yeah, lease obtained at this date and time. This is when the lease expires at this date and time. And even though that's really weird because it says, it's, oh, it's 24 hour period. I didn't see the PM. I was like, that's the exact same time, <laughs> right? No, it is uh, AM is when it was given. PM is when it expires, okay? So very cool. And then of course, there's all the other information that goes along with it. We can also see that information inside of our Kali Linux box. We can do it a little bit differently um, because it, 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 if you're using DH client, it stores it in a file. So let's go take a look at that. So we did see it when let's do here. So if I did IP adder, we saw like how long the lease had left, right? I, th I think that's what that is, but we can definitely see, let me clear this, not seller clear. And if we cats slash var slash, I think it's lib DHCP, right? Yeah. And then it's DHCP or DH client dot leases. If I click that, you can see right there, there's my lease. There's the interface it's attached to. There's the address it was given. There's the subnet mask that came along. And then right there, lease time, 1800, I believe that's seconds. Could be minutes though, but. Uh, DHCP message type, domain servers. Again, this was all a part of the package, all a part of the agreement that we all signed. DHCP server identifier. Okay, who is my DHCP server? There's the IP address. There's the broadcast address for this network. There's the domain for this network. It's just called local domain. And then there you go. Renew at this date and time. Rebind at this date and time. And then this is when it expires. So we can see that information. Of course, this is specific Kali Linux. When you get into Linux systems, things can vary from time to time. But yeah, you know, that that's just Linux for you. What are you going to do? Yeah, that's another series, right? All about Linux. That's Maybe we need to do that. But... Now we know this is a finite thing. This isn't going to last forever. And now we know why, because there's leases and they expire. All right, let's get back into things here. Let's see if we can find that Dora process once again. Oh, I cleared it out. So I'll do a dh uh, sudo dh client dash r on eth1 again, Oop, eth1. And then we'll, we'll reclaim it one more time. We'll just change that to a v. And now we can see our our request again. So where were we? Okay, we did discover. Hey, I need an IP address. I need I need network information. Server, respond. Cool, I got one right here. You want it? Heck yeah, I do. I'll take that. Looks good. And then the acknowledgement. That's the last part of the Dora process, which is, well, it's the last response from the server that you need anyway. It says, cool, I've made a log. You're using 10.10.10.129. And I'm going to send that back to you, let you know you're good to go. And then our adapter binds it and lets us know the renewal is in 688 seconds, right? So that's that's why I kind of like using DH client for this. Very, very cool stuff. Okay. We understand the Dora process. We understand what DHCP is and what it does. There's one more little piece of the puzzle. That is reservations. Reservations, right? I need to make a reservation, sir. Yes, like calling a restaurant and saying, hold the table for me. I can call or... As an administrator, I can set a reservation for a different cl different clients. So maybe I have a server, and I want to set all that information. What it's what it's its IP, what's its you know DNS, what's its gateway, all that fun stuff that we've seen. I want to make sure that every time that thing reaches out, that server reaches out for IP information, it gets the same exact information. Now the astute observer is probably sitting out there and going, "Well, Daniel, can't you just?" type that stuff in and do it manually? Can't you do it statically? And you are a smart cookie. And that is a valid way to go. Manual configuration is a, a valid thing that we do from time to time, and, it, and you will do it. But that said, sometimes we can meet in the middle where I go, you know what would be great is if I can use DHCP to act as a uh, kind of a proxy configurator for me. So I don't have to walk over to a device or remotely log into it, which is not a good idea, especially when you're playing around with IP configuration stuff. 
right? Like if I wanted to release and re- let me let me show you something really quickly, just fun fact. Oh, I've got IP address, right? There it is, 192.168.1.161. I am remote desktoped into this system. If I do an IP config forward slash release, guess what's going to happen? It's going to release that information. And I no longer have all the necessary things to be on this network. And it will end my remote desktop session with this device. Mm, That would be bad if I was doing some sort of work. I can't release it. Now, if I accidentally made the mistake, would I have to ask someone to walk over? Can you please get on the keyboard, type in a IP config, renew. And that's kind of what we saw over there with DH client, right? We did a dash R to release that information. It has two adapters. That's why I didn't lose connectivity. I was connected via a different network. (laughs) Daniel thinks around these things. That's a fun thing. You can have multiple networks on one device. It's called multi-homed and it is nice. But on that Windows server, I don't have that. I only have that one adapter that I can connect to. So if I were to release that information, it would lose connectivity. And until it asked for more connectivity and applied it, I would not be able to access it again. Say, so there you go. But reservation allows me to do that kind of automatically. Anytime this machine reboots, anytime a lease expires, I would be able to just get the exact same information because I put it in a reservation and I don't have to walk over and make those manual configurations. So it's a really nice thing to be able to do to set those reservations. So it's easier to manage. Uh, You can share much of the configuration, if not all of that you need, and you can do configuration changes as well. If I ever said, you know what, this server doesn't need to be 10.10.10.129, it needs to be 10.10.10.200. I can easily make that change. I just go into the reservation and change the IP address and then force a, a reboot or something and it gets the new information. Zang, we love it. So that's why reservations are really nice. And I did want to show this to you a little bit. Any DHCP server, which you probably have one on your network, it's most likely your wireless access point or wireless router, your router. A lot of these things have DHCP built into them. And that's what you get here. So I've, this is uh, at ui.linksys.com. I've pulled up one of the routers. Uh, this is basically, and you can see that right here. It says, this is just a simulator interface. So this is not real. This is not my real stuff. It just simulates that. But you can go to ui.linksys.com and you can play around with this as well. But over here under router settings, I click connectivity and it brings up this dialog box. And from here, I think we go to local network. And then right here, we have DHCP reservations. It's very small, but there we go. And now I can come in and select and create a DHCP DHCP reservation. I can manually add that, giving it a device name, set the IP address, let it know what MAC address it is, and then save it. I've got myself a reservation. This works as well, like Windows Server does this. You can do this. A lot of more complex DHCP services and servers do this type of thing. You just have to understand how it works and depending on the vendor and the you know manual, the, the, the settings, like where is all that stuff at? You have to learn that because it's going to be specific to that service itself, that server, that vendor. So just be aware of that. But it's really cool to know that that is there and that you can be able to do it. And hopefully... We now go DHCP, rock and roll. We love it. It is amazing. Maybe even be able to work with it a little bit easier, understand what's going on. So if there were ever any issues, you might be able to troubleshoot. Don't worry. We're going to have a whole troubleshooting episode upcoming. So be on the lookout for that. There you go. Hopefully you now understand really well DHCP and why we love it. That said, thanks for watching. If you got some value out of this episode, I would... Love it if you just found that like and subscribe button. Definitely like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when these next episodes are coming out. Follow Anti-Siphon Training. Go to antisiphontraining.com. See what's coming up on our schedule. We have all sorts of resources that we put out there for free or low cost. So we want you to avail yourself of them so that you can increase your knowledge and skill. That said, I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great day.